Welcome back, Dreamsy here. On today's vintage cigarette review, we will be checking out a pack of Winston menthol cigarettes. I believe this pack to be from the late 1970s, early 1980s. And we will also be checking out a bottle of Pepsi Long Neck Richard Petty Edition. Winston Cup Celebratory Pepsi. <laughs> First Winston Cup race. I wanted to pair these two together because they both share Winston. Alrighty. Well, I in no way encourage smoking, as always. Smoking is well known to cause many forms of cancer and also lead to many diseases. Alrighty. Well, please excuse me to come over there. We will check both of these out together. <laughs> I hope you're doing well, as always. Alright, we'll start by checking out the pack of cigarettes. As I said, I believe this to be from the late 1970s, early 1980s. See, lovely silver, light dances, lovely off of it. You see, Winston, menthol, 100s. Start out with the Surgeon General has determined that cigarette smoking is dangerous to your health. Flip it over. We see a barcode there. 123163. Three. We have 20 Class A cigarettes. R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Very cool. Check out the top of the package. Lovely silver foil. Good. Winston menthol. Now these were in my first unboxing video. You see it's quite faded. Barely make out the South Dakota stamp tax paid. So, yeah, pretty good. You see they are 100s, so they are long. So we'll go ahead, we'll check out the history of the Winston cigarette brand. Wake the iPad up, of course. <laughs> Very good. All right. Winston. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Winston is an American brand of cigarettes currently owned and manufactured by the ITG Brands. <clears throat> Subsidiary of Imperio Tobacco in the United States and by Japan Tobacco outside the U.S. <laughs> The brand is named after the town where R.J. Reynolds started his t business, which is Winston-Salem, North Carolina. As of 2017, Winston has the seventh highest U.S. market share, 2%, of all cigarettes brands, according to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention and the Maxwell Report. This market share has been falling since 2003, when it peaked at 3.92%. Although Winston has consistently been in the top 10 cigarette brands by U.S. market share since 2001, according to data from the St Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration National Household Survey on Drug Abuse. <clears throat> Winston was introduced in 1954 by the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and quickly became one of the top-selling cigarette brands using the slogan, Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. It became the number one cigarette sold in the world by 1966, a position it held until 1972 when Marlboro overtook the brand. In 1980s, Winston was most favored brand in Puerto Rico, 
thanks to the advertising slogan. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this. I do apologize. Winston y Puerto Rico. No hay nada mejo. Winston and Puerto Rico. There is nothing better. Winston then became the number two cigarette, a position it continues to maintain today under ownership of Japan Tobacco outside the U.S. While the American version of the brand has faced steadily declining sales, dropping to sixth place by 2005, the last national survey, the American version of Winston is also known for its more recent claim of becoming addictive-free of the late 1990s. This, in turn, led to the settlement with the Federal Trade Commission requiring Winston to clarify subsequent advertisements that the lack of additives did not result in a safer cigarette. In 1999, R.J. Reynolds was spun off from R.J. Nabisco to subsequently sold its non-U.S. operations to Japan Tobacco. <clears throat> On July 15, 2014, R. Reynolds American, R.J. Reynolds' parent company, agreed to purchase Lorillard Tobacco Company for $27.4 billion as a result to alleviate antitrust concerns. <clears throat> Winston along with Cool, Maverick, and Salem cigarette brands, was sold to Imperial Tobacco for $7.1 billion. On July 12, 2015, Reynolds American and Lower Lord completed the merger, and Winston officially fell under ownership of Imperial Tobacco spin-off ITG brands. Sponsorship NASCAR. Beginning in 1971, Winston was the sponsor of the highest title of the NASCAR series, known as the Winston Cup Series. R.J. Reynolds ended Winston's association with the series in 2003. The series is now known as NAS NASCAR Cup Series. Drag Racing. From 1975, to 2001, Winston was also the sponsor of NHRA Drag Racing Series, which is currently sponsored by Camping World. Superbike World Championship. Winston sponsored the 10 Kate Racing Team in 2005 and 2006. In countries where tobacco advertising was prohibited, the acronym WIN-WIN was used instead. Football, soccer. Winston was a sponsor of the 1982 FIFA World Cup. Sailing. Winston sponsors Dennis Connors, 1993-1994. Um, <laughs> white bread, 60 in the white bread round the world yacht race. Connors sailed two legs of the race with Winston finishing 6th overall and 4th in the White Bread 60 class. Controversy. Winston and the Flintstones. Winston was one of the original sponsors of the Flintstones from 1960 to 1962. In the commercials, Flintstone characters, Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble were seen promoting Flint <laughs> Winston in every episode. And ending ended with Fred lighting a Winston for his wife Wilma while singing products jingle by the third season however the show's ads became more oriented towards children and Winston's was replaced by Welch's <clears throat> Winston's and targeting of African Americans. In the 1970s, Winston's specifically targeted the African American minority, slim, similar to what Cool and Newport did during the time. After World War II had ended, African tobacco companies started to explore new markets to maintain their prosperity. 
the growth in urban migration and the growing incomes of African Americans, called at the time, emerging Negro market, gave the tobacco companies what was sometimes called an export market at home. Additionally, a new kind of media started to appear after the war when several glossy monthly magazines included Negro Digest, 1942, renamed Black World, Ebony, 1945, and Negro Achievements, 1947, renamed Serpia, began to be published. These relatively expensive products produced magazines were far more attractive to the tobacco advertisers than the cheap Negro daily magazines of the pre-war era with glossy pages and a far wider national distribution. The magazines meant for a purely African-American audience also meant that advertisers could produce adverts aimed at and featuring African Americans away from the eyes of white consumers. <clears throat> David Gorillitz and the Winston Men. Between 1982 and 1988, I'm going to butcher this guy's names, I do apologize. David Gorillitz. David Gorlitz, sorry about that, was the winsome man, appearing in 42 billboard advertisements. More than the Marlboro Man in 1988, he produced, he publicly denounced the tobacco industry and joined the emerging anti-smoking movement after suffering health issues related to smoking. He has spent more than 20 years working in schools as a public speaker, encouraging kids not to start smoking. Now that is a brilliant idea, and I concur. I have a zesty drink here. Ah, very good. Move on to Winston and addictive free claims. Well, that sounds positively ludicrous. <laughs> All right, in 2015, the U.S. Drug and Food Administration, the FDA, warned ITG brands, the makers of Winston cigarettes, that labeling the product as addictive-free violated federal laws because the claims implied that cigarettes were safer than other brands. The August warning letter to IDG marked the first time the FDA had used its authority under the 2009 Tobacco Control Law to take action against a company for making addictive free. No bull ad campaign claims on products packaging. It was one of the free warning letters that the agency shipped out in August 2015 to cigarette companies whose products were labeled addictive free, natural, or both. Winston had been previously settled with the FTC when tobacco advertising was under their purview regarding similar claims in 1999. Winston Cup Museum Lawsuit After Winston relinquished their sponsorship of the NASCAR Cup Series in 2004, a museum honoring the Winston Cup era opened in 2005, operated independently of R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company or NASCAR themselves, but otherwise using the Winston branding as last used in 2003, following a four-year legal battle against ITG Brands, which would argue that the sale of Winston Brands from R.J. Reynolds in 2015 meant that the history of the Winston Cup series belonged to them. The museum closed in July 2023 as part of the injunction, before permanently closing in December 18th, 2023, following a brief reopening in September. All right, markets. Well, you can pause and read that, because I'm not going to read all of that off because I've already talked quite enough. Hopefully you fast forward through all of that. 
let's move on to the dissection portion quickly. <laughs> All right, we'll get one more look at the package itself. Lovely silver package. <laughs> we'll break our fresh freshness seal. We can see that some tobacco has been knocked loose over the many, many years and decades. Still looks quite lovely though, I must say. Of course, it's a soft package. <laughs> Ugh. Going to look like an idiot, but we'll get the tweezers out. Makes it look so much prettier. Give me a helping hand here. All right, enough messing around here. Ah, get out the big guns. I just trimmed my nails. I don't got any. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. There we go. I hope they're in good condition. All right, big reveal time. Let's see what we're working with here. All right. Nice and easy. Okay. Looks good. You see very faintly. To pan up on. Make sure it looks good for the reveal. You can see very faintly Winston cigarette. I'm going to kill two birds at one stone. We get the sniff. Wow. Yeah, smells very good. I love a menthol cigarette. You know that. Mmm, very good. We'll check out the crispiness. little bit of crispiness, not too much. We'll lay this right here. We get one more out for dissection portion. Ah, you got to love that. No damage. I don't see. Get a closer look here off camera. Nope, no hints of discoloration. We got our smoking. We got our dissection. We're going to Get one final look at the package. Beautiful. Love that. It's kind of nice texture to it. It's lovely. All right, I'm going to, pardon me, I'll grab my rooster cutting board here. I'm going to put these guys over here for the smoking section. <laughs> and we'll move on to the section portion. Very good. Very nice. Get our Winston in frame. We'll chop her open. Check out our tobacco. Ah, lovely. Golden brown texture like sun. Beautiful, beautiful. I smell it. Hints of raisin. Lovely menthol notes. Wonderful, I cannot wait to smoke it. But we have a nice zesty drink awaiting us. Wait till you see how I have to open it. I have no bottle opener, and I have also misplaced my Swiss Army knife, and I'm looking around, and I've also misplaced my other implement as well, so I'm gonna have to go look for that. I look like a total buffoon. Uh, pretty straightforward filter, nothing fancy. So, pardon me while I go look for my other implement. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. Only do one take around here, but that's not necessarily true. If you watch my outtake video, I just uploaded two of those. All right, dissection portion is complete. So it is now time to get our zesty drink prepared. So I did this once before. We'll take a look at our zesty drink for today. We have a Richard Petty, 1992. Pepsi long neck, very interesting indeed. We'll see. We don't really have any nutritional facts on the bottle, so that's interesting. We'll check out the lid. Hopefully this will come into focus. 
Uh, it might, but if it doesn't, I can just read it off to you. It contains carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, and or sugar, caramel color, phosphoric acid, caffeine, citric acid, and natural flavoring. Very nice. We'll take one more look at the bottle itself. As you can see, the most of the details are on the, the case itself. But we can see it's a first Winston Cup victory, February 28th, 1960, Charlotte Fairgrounds, Richard Petty. You have his mug right there on the bottle. You have a barcode, 12 fluid ounces. So we'll go ahead and crack it open. Like I said, I misplaced my Swiss Army knife. I do not own a bottle opener. So what we do is we get a, uh, get a nice uh, pair of pliers here. So let's listen, see if we get a nice hiss. That's a nice zesty hiss if I ever did hear one. Very nice. All right, bear with me here. We're gonna get this off if it kills me. Very crude measures, I'm sorry. There we go. Look at that, where there's a will, there's a way. All right, no kids allowed, but my bottle, my glass for today is a naked lady. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, give it a sniff. Ah, smells uh, a little musky, a little sweet. Not bad. All right. Pour this in my naked lady glass. I have my Winston cigarette ready to go. A bit of carbonation, that's not too bad. Better than that Coke from 1995. All right, we'll fire the camera up. We'll fire up this Winston cigarette and have some Richard Petty Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, YouTube. All right, Winston cigarette. long neck mm. dry pool wow spectacular hints of raisin lovely notes of menthol mm. oh yeah well let's just go for the gusto right away ah. hey that's not bad I gotta tell you what being from 1992, it's worlds better than that Coke from 1995. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, I'm more worried about the cigarette, though. I know that's going to be good. Darn old. That's really good. I'm just happy that Pepsi's good. Wow. Yeah, that Coke was terrible. I did a terrible job reviewing it. So I do apologize about that. Mm. Yeah, the Winston cigarette. Spectacular. Very good. I definitely do not encourage smoking nor drinking soda, expired or brand new. <laughs> but yeah, that's not half bad. Mm. Yeah, damn. Yeah, that ain't bad. Oh, man. Yeah, so I hope everyone's doing quite well. 
um, early Saturday morning. Wow, yeah, that's excellent. So yeah, I believe late 1970s, early, early 1980s. Mm. It held up wonderfully, very nice. Definitely in flavor country, I tell you what. Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah, I wonder what the big difference is, too. Because I had those Cokes, glass bottle. It must be just how, you know, the conditions they're kept in. It must make all the difference in the world because this Pepsi, it's a little flat, but <laughs> it, it amazes me. It really does. Mm. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And you can see right on the box, it's 1992. <laughs> it's crazy. And like I said, I do not suggest doing this. I really don't, but... <laughs> Alright, well, the next video will probably be the Carlton 120s. I do also have the same vintage, I'm going to say... Pretty much the same, late 70s, early 1980s, Winston filters, these are non-mental. Um, probably save that maybe for next weekend, so tune in for that. But the menthol variants, wonderful, spectacular. I know I say that a lot. But yeah, excellent. Sorry about my long-winded history lesson there, but hopefully you found it enjoyable, if you're still even watching. I hope you are. <laughs> but as always, please do like, comment, subscribe, share the video. I'd appreciate it. But we'll pound out the rest of these. It's great. You see the fizz, carbonation. It's good. All right. It's about, it's about done and dusted. Yeah, but hopefully you check out that new Fallout. I'm pretty big in the Fallout. I play a lot of um, Fallout 76. I haven't watched the new Fallout show, but I'm pretty big into perfectly preserved cigarettes. <laughs> I gotta get some Nuka Cola, maybe. But I have plenty of Pepsi's and Cokes. I do collect a lot of that. <clears throat> good it holds up so if there's a nuclear apocalypse or anything like that dreamsy is good to go all right i hope you have a wonderful day dreamsy out <laughs>